Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we will discuss about hoarseness of voice. A harsh, rough and breathy quality in voice is called hoarseness of voice. To know the pathophysiology, first let's have a look at this picture. This picture shows the vocal cord movements of a person with normal phonation. And like this video, the three factors are necessary for production of normal speech. Number one, proper approximation of the vocal cords. Number two, the vocal cords must be of proper size and stiffness. Number three, the vocal cords should vibrate regularly in response to ear column. Any etiology that hampers proper functioning of any of these factors causes hoarseness of voice. For example, proper approximation of the vocal cords is hampered due to paralysis or fixation of the vocal cord, fibrosis of the vocal cord or a tumor intervening in between the vocal cords. Vocal cord size may be increased in edema and decreased due to fibrosis. Vocal cord stiffness decreases in paralysis and the cords may not vibrate properly if there is congestion, submucosal hemorrhage, nodule or polyp. Now come to the etiologies. From pathophysiology I have already discussed, I think you have already imagined about the possible etiologies. Number one, the inflammatory causes. It may be acute or chronic. Acute bacterial or viral inflammation of the larynx is the cause and the chronic infection may be specific or non-specific. Specific infections are tuberculosis, syphilis, scleroma, fungal infection. Number two etiology is tumors. The tumors may be benign or malignant. Benign tumors include papilloma, hemangioma, fibroma, chondroma. Some tumor-like masses like nodule, polyp, cysts, laryngocele, contact ulcer may also cause hoarseness. In number three, there are some traumatic causes like foreign body trauma, sharp or penetrating trauma, or it may be due to intubation injury. Number four is the paralytic causes. The paralysis may be of recurrent laryngeal nerve or superior laryngeal nerve or from both of the nerves. Number five is the fixation of the cords, which may be due to arthritis of the cricoalitinoid joints. Number six is the congenital etiology. The congenital causes are laryngeal web, laryngeal cysts and laryngocele. Number seven is the functional etiology. In number eight, there are some miscellaneous causes like mixodema, gout, dysphonia, plica, ventricularis. So how to investigate a case of hoarseness of voice? First and very important is that history. In history, we should know the duration of illness, whether it is acute or chronic. The periodicity of the hoarseness is also important because the morning hoarseness is associated with gastroesophageal reflux disease and evening hoarseness is associated with vocal abuse. Patient's occupation, habit and associated complaints are very, very important. Hoarseness persisting for more than three weeks deserves laryngeal examination and malignancy should be excluded in a patient over age of 40 years. So after taking history, we can do relevant head neck examination and other systemic examination. We can do indirect laryngoscopy, we can do direct laryngoscopy and if there is mass on direct laryngoscopy, we can do biopsy. If we see that the vocal cords are paralytic, then bronchoscopy, esophagoscopy may be required to exclude malignancy hematological investigations and radiological investigations are done according to the suggestion from history and relevant examination. So in the end, if I summarize, any hoarseness that is persisting for less than two weeks and associated with fever and upper respiratory tract symptoms, then it is most likely due to inflammatory reason. And hoarseness persisting for more than three weeks we have to do the laryngeal examination and we can find some vocal cord lesions like the unilateral lesions may be polyp, granuloma, papilloma. The bilateral lesions we can find are vocal nodules, papilloma 
and if the hoarseness is persisting for more than three weeks which is progressive patient is a smoker he feels uh, pain in the throat there may be lump in the throat and some associated other dysphagia like symptoms then it may be malignancy in laryngeal examination we can find in this patients unilateral laryngeal malignant lesion or if there is no malignancy we can find the bilateral rhynchus edema if the hoarseness is variable with the history of uh, surgery head neck malignancy irradiation then it may be due to impaired mobility of the vocal cords in a person with variable hoarseness with strained and raspy voice if we find that there is no abnormality in the vocal cord then the diagnosis may be muscle tension dysphonia spasmodic dysphonia functional dysphonia malingering hypothyroidism so this is all from the hoarseness of voice i hope i have enlightened about the various etiologies and how to investigate them hope you have enjoyed it thank you for watching